Hello and welcome to the Black Tower. My name is Aaron, and this is your midweek uh, bonus kind of fan reaction episode. Um, we just released part two of our prophecy series, um, finishing up the Koreathon cycle, and um, we have some uh, listener feedback from that. We also have some listener some feedback from some people who are listening to uh, previous episodes that I wanted to kind of touch on and acknowledge really quick. Um, this is hopefully going to be a short one, although I don't know, it could be three hours long. I'm going to talk for as long as I go and um, yeah. So uh, Dennis Houston, who his Twitter handle, handle is father of one, um, he says, I just reread chapter six of A Memory of Light. Moraine explains almost every verse of the Koreathon cycle, and it's a very interesting reread. Um, we did go ahead and take a look at that. I think up to now, we've kind of been pretending like A Memory of Light doesn't exist just for the sake of major, major spoilers, but it, it does exist, and we do spoil everything, so... Um, it's true. There is a section in that chapter six where everybody's kind of together and Moraine, they're kind of putting together the, the dragon's piece, this document and Moraine kind of goes through and explains some things for people that have questions, uh, people like uh, Elaine and Edwin and, um, she, she definitely goes into the seals on the Dark One's prison. She talks a lot about that. And uh, I'm just going to say that in, in, in lieu of spoiling those major end spoilers, I'm going to say that if you have the book, go ahead and take a look at Chapter 6 of A Memory of Light. Or if you are in the process of your first read through just know that that's coming up and those that will answer some questions there's some questions in there that the girls are asking her like what does it mean when it says weep for your salvation um, why why are we weeping who are we weeping for what does it mean and Moraine kind of explains um, as much as she can as, as much as is known about prophecy as much as she knows about prophecy um, oh yeah and spoiler Moraine's back she didn't die. Almost nobody ever dies. Um, unless there's a body, there's no death. Um, so yeah, that's about all I want to say on that. Um, thank you, Dennis, for pointing that out for us and reminding us that that chapter even existed. I think both of us had kind of forgotten that it was there and that she explains a lot of uh, good theories and stuff and helps us work through it. Um, Lizzie Hall is at Liz to Hallie eight Liz four. Um, Liz Hall, that's where we're going to go with says listening to at tower podcast, episode four, uh, white cloaks, verbal references to them as quote, children give me a distressing visceral reaction. Seeing it as children of the light gave me a detachment. Thanks for comparisons to other disreputable military actions in the real world. Um, I'm going to start with um, Andrew's reaction to this, which he is communicating to me, is that he says, I quote, I think it is supposed to make you react like that for the majority of the series. They're not the lovable, or they're not that lovable, for most of the series, so it's possible Robert Jordan wanted us to detach from the children name. For me, it helped me to see them as a bit self-obsessed and fanatical in their beliefs. I I would totally agree with that. Um, I think there's there's something to be said for the idea of this organization that's been around for so long and been corrupted by by just. People and men in general and dark friends specifically, uh, we do see s specific instances of um, Myrdral infiltrating the White Cloak organization and 
interacting with some dark friends and, and uh, influencing events in that way. And this organization has gone wrong. Um, to a point about us referencing them as children and it gave her a, a distressing reaction. I get that. I think we were just abbreviating their moniker of children of the light into children because of it's for the sake of ease. And I think maybe we're going to try and avoid that in the future because you're right. It does um, create this thing where you're not viewing them as full adults and they're misbehaving children. And it's not that. Uh, at least that's that's how I take it that when you think of children, that's what you think of. But it, it's not that they are the organization. There's a whole systematic organization uh, that's messed up. And you are, you are supposed to hate them um, for the most part. And then eventually they kind of turn back towards their intended purpose. And uh, there's some restoration that happens inside of the organization internally um, without Rand even being the one to do it. It just kind of happens on its own from on the, the merits of some of the people who are inside the organization and their honor and them wanting to do the right thing. Um, so yeah, I, I do think that you're supposed to react that way. Uh, and, and the name the moniker children or children of the light is supposed to um, be off-putting and distressing yeah, but uh, you're right and the name is children of the light or white cloaks and i think we're going to try and stick to that in the future i haven't talked to andrew about it but i think i think we will um there's there's not a lot to say about the last episode uh, as far as reaction from people who listen to it go, I think we laid everything out as much as we could. Um, and you know, we don't, we don't know all of it. We are just making assumptions about some things and we're reading through these prophecies and going, okay, what does that mean? What does this mean? How do we, how do we figure this out? So, uh, as much as you guys are listening and, and want to, um, respond to us and say, Hey, you are totally dead wrong about this. We would love to hear that. We'd love to hear that reaction from you and uh, your fan theories or, or confirmed. Um, I know in the past we've had some listeners chime in and say, okay, in this interview, Robert Jordan said this, and that's why you're wrong. And I, I'd love to hear that too. Um, I, I don't always love hearing that I'm wrong. Uh, I'm a human being, but I do always want to be corrected when I am wrong because um, I think having saying the right things and and being factual is important. So um, if you know of a better fan theory or if you know of a confirmation, something that's been confirmed by Robert Jordan or Brandon Sanderson um, to be fact, go ahead and send that over to us or reply to us or whatever and make sure that we take a look at it because I do, I do want to make sure that we're, when we're saying, when we're spouting theories and saying things that we're saying the right things, especially if it's been confirmed. Um, I, I want to take a, mem- a moment here to talk about um, the last piece of reaction that we have. It's from Bookworm200. Um, who's a Twitter, a Twitter follow of ours, who is actually, um, I believe our first Patreon subscriber. Uh, we got that up and running and we're going to talk about that a lot next episode, um, which is going to be the, the first episode in the prophecy series that doesn't follow the Koreathon cycle. It's going to be, um, dark prophecies and foretellings and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, AL prophecies, things like that. Um, but Bookworm says, um, quote, she wants the dragon's dragon. <laughs> Come on, guys. I just did a spit take of my coffee all over my PC. Definitely not safe for work. Um, a- Andrew says, hee hee, you're welcome. 
Uh, vets are rarely ever safe for work, and we pride ourselves on sometimes making you go, WTF did they just say? Glad you enjoyed it and found it funny. And I, I'm definitely in agreement with Andrew here. We, uh, um, As far as how much we swear or make um, sexual references, we're just we're just being us and um, we're just being honest about who we are. And sometimes it's going to be, sometimes it's going to be dirty jokes or sometimes it's going to be innuendos like that. And uh, we hope that we're not uh, offending anybody's delicate sensibilities um, when we do things or say things. Um, And, you know, I hope that you didn't spit your coffee all over your personal computer. I hope it was a work computer or something. Um, but yeah, d- definitely we're happy that we made you laugh. Um, it's always nice to hear that somebody thought we were funny and not just us. Cause you know, we think we're hilarious. Uh, but some other people might not think so, but you know, we know that we're just a barrel of laughs. Um, if, if you want to respond to things that we've said that um, upset you or made you laugh, we want to hear those too. Um, especially if something that we didn't mean or didn't know was going to be hurtful. We don't ever want to be hurtful to people. We don't mind offending some people, but if, if you're hurtful, uh, or if you're hurt by something that we said, we, we definitely want to know um, so that we can avoid that behavior in the future. Uh, um, just a little housekeeping. Uh, coming up soon, we are doing an episode with uh, the White Tower podcast. Um, they are, we're considering them a sister, sister show. They consider us to be a brother show. Um, we're not really connected to them uh, in any way other than in name and spirit. And they are doing a different thing that's awesome. And I listen to every episode and I love it. And both Jen and Jess over there are fantastic. They have agreed to be our first um, guests on our show. We are going to record that this weekend, uh, the 15th. And we are asking for people to send in to our Twitter or our email, uh, send in anything that you want us to talk about um, or ideas that you have that you want us to either verify or dismiss um, or maybe even personal questions. We, If you're going to send us a personal question or send one to them, um, we reserve the right to not air it if it's uh, too personal or not something that they want to talk about. So just keep that in mind that you can send whatever you want. And you know, if, if we deem it to be inappropriate, it's not going to stay on, but I mean, you've listened to our podcast, you know, um, we don't have a problem with inappropriate things most of the time. Um, so our, our Twitter, you can send us, uh, tweets to at tower podcast. Um, or direct messages. We'll take direct messages too. If you want to email us something a little longer form or you're sitting in front of your computer um, listening at work. I know I listen to a lot of podcasts at work, but if you want to send us an email, our email address is blacktowerpod at gmail.com. And we, we do respond to email. Andrew and I are both up on that. A lot of times you'll get a response from both of us. Um, we, we look forward to hearing, um, what you guys have to input into this discussion that we're going to have. Um, also we just launched a discord server. Um, there is a link on our Twitter. Um, I know the white tower has retweeted that link a couple of times. We retweeted it a couple of times. We're going to send it out a couple more times, I think. And then after that, if you want the link, go ahead and send us a direct message and we'll send it to, because we don't want to seem like we're just spamming the crap out of Twitter just to get people on our discord. Um, but we do want you there. We want you to interact with people. It's uh, us and the white tower pod ladies are also admins on that server. Um, 
and we do all kinds of fun stuff anything wheel of time related there's a, a channel for memes and talking about pets and just it's just a great place to connect with other people who enjoy a series that you enjoy um, i know that i've seen a couple of people post on twitter that it's hard sometimes when you read a series and you really love it like this and then you want to talk to people about it and nobody that you know has read it and i i think that's a common problem for us just because fantasy and um fantasy series like this is especially kind of looked down on in our society as something that's childish or for immature people and i don't think that's the case or we wouldn't be talking about it we wouldn't have started a podcast um, to talk about the real issues that are in this series if we felt like it was immature or for kids um, it's definitely not for kids and our podcast is definitely not safe for work well i mean it might be safe for work if you have headphones on um, or if there's nobody else around to hear it so it's definitely not for children though um, and we do we put the explicit tag on on all of our podcasts that go up just to kind of warn you and um you know if if in the future we decide to change that uh, things might change and we might tone it down but i think for right now we're just going to be who we are and we're going to make dirty jokes where we consider ourselves to be um military veterans and that veterans like us have uh, a kind of a specific sense of humor and it's it's not for everybody um but I think a lot of people find it um, amusing. So we're going to keep doing it and we're just going to keep being us. Um, I think that's everything that I have for today. I know I kind of like word vomited this all out on there, but um, I'm, I'm wanting to get it up and want to. Uh, we just finished recording our episode for this weekend. Um, it's going to be great. We hope you love it. We hope you like it. If you do love it, please uh, let us know or if you really love it, go on um, your podcast app and leave us a review, rate us with, you know, as many stars as you think we deserve. I'm not asking for anything that you don't feel is true, um, but that would really, really help us out. Give us some, some visibility it, and it's a way that you can do it. That doesn't cost anything except your time to go do it. Um, so with that, I'm going to leave you and just say that um, for Andrew and myself, um, we're coming up to the holidays and we just want everybody to have a good, great holiday season. Um, we're the Black Tower, walking the light.